I've never started off Boss's World with a vulnerable moment, but I feel it's appropriate this time because I cannot continue with this episode until I fix this. I need to fix that hair, I need to dye it, I need to cut it, not just for the wedding and WrestleMania this weekend, but just because the weather's getting nice and I haven't done it since last year for the holidays, so let's get this taken care of. Look at that. I feel like a brand new man and I'm cutting it tomorrow, but at least the color looks great. Part two of my vulnerable moment, I want to get my hair cut. It is pouring out here and I'm running late because I just woke up a half hour ago, but I need to make sure my hair looks good and I'm not taking off my hood right now because I'm using one hand for my phone, one hand for my umbrella, <laughs> but you'll see the result afterwards. It has to be like the worst two days to have to get all this stuff done. Fresh out the barber shop, feel like myself again. My hair was getting out of control. I mean, it still looked fine, but I needed to cut it now that the weather's nice. Have all these events this weekend, this month, and I'll be cutting it more consistently. It's just there in January, February, March. It's just so cold and like I'm not really doing much. I just get lazy sometimes. But now that I look like myself, let's start the April 2024 edition of Bosch's World. Let's bring in the little intro graphics now. Welcome to the April 2024 edition of Bosch's World. Now, I've had a jam-packed month. As you all know, I already had Mania Weekend all lined up, and I made a last-minute decision to go to Raw at the Barclays Center on April 1st. On top of the craziness this week, like I don't have to work tonight and get up at 9 in the morning to get my hair done, I decided to go to Raw tonight. I'm doing... For the first time ever, I'm doing two Monday Night Raws in a row, but I had to be there since I'm not going to see The Rock wrestle on Saturday. I need to see The Rock tonight in Barclays, and I got myself some pretty decent seats, if I might say so myself. And I'm wearing this jacket for the first time in three years since, ironically, the last time I was in Philly at Dave & Buster's for the Major Pod signing. I have a long night, so I'm going to have to <laughs> finish this coffee, but anyways... I'm off to take my train. It was a great Raw. It opened up with The Rock, starting off the show, cutting a promo. That might have been the first time I've seen The Rock since Rumble 2015 in Philly, of all places, with Roman Reigns. For, that loss, baby. for a decent price, I got floor seats, third row. For Raw, I've never been that close for a televised WWE event, ever, so that was awesome in itself. My whole row just fucking left. At one point, my entire row cleared out, and I was able to run to the aisle and be there for the aisle for DIY's entrance and for the Judgment Day entrance. Malik was also there. He was at the section like right above me, so he kept like messing with me throughout the show, calling my name. Boss! No, he's mad deaf. He really is. There were times I didn't hear him. <laughs>
and then the show ended with The Rock just destroying Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes with the weight belt. The Rock and Roman just kicked their ass. It's like, you know, they had to get the heat going into Mania. And overall, it was just a fun show. So here's some of the cool shots that I got from the great seats that I had. And those seats were cheaper than what I paid for my Mania seats, that's for sure. What an awesome show and the week is just getting started and the week did not slow down for me the next day i went back to the barnes and noble on fifth avenue to meet ronda rousey whose book came out that day i met becky the week prior which i covered last month on boss's world luckily the line wasn't as crazy and it ran pretty smoothly the books were pre-signed so she was just doing photos so that helped it run a lot faster than becky who was actually signing and personalizing all of the books so, i mean the brief interaction she had she seemed pretty friendly always been a fan of ronda so that weekend was wrestlemania i already edited my two mania vlogs and they're both available on boss star productions part one was everything before i left to the wedding which was major pod live 19 wrestlecon and meeting up with mike and alejandro driving to philly which probably was the best part of it was just seeing mike alejandro and i just bugging out having fun in the car busting each other's balls and going to the show i think that truly was like the essence of that vlog the friendship we've had we've built over the last two years and then going back on Sunday after the wedding, going to WWE World on Sunday and Monday, going to WrestleMania, seeing Cody finish the story, which I've been hyping up for months already on this show, and it actually finally happened. And you can just see how overwhelmed I am at the reaction. And, and when it finally happened, you can see like how special that moment was seeing Cody crown champion and because he is Cuban like me. So yeah, be sure to check out both of those vlogs. They'll be linked down below. I knew there would be way too much happening those weekends for me to try to cram it into Boss's world. And they were worthy of their own vlogs. So be sure to check both of them out. I put a lot of work into them and I'm really proud of both of them. And now for this month's purchases of the month that will end up in storage for the foreseeable future. Here are some of the goodies I brought back from my Mania weekend in Philly. Here's some of the goodies I picked up. First off, my beautiful tote bag that Mike was making fun of all weekend. I got the Mania program. It's a shame they don't really make programs like this as often, but they do still make them for Mania. I have my one from Mania 29, opposite side Hall of Fame class. Got my foam middle finger from Major Pod Live 19, live in Philly. I kept all of my wristbands from WrestleCon and WWE World. I got my heels and faces figure signed by Mark. I put the Live 19 VIP badge in there so it wouldn't get messed up. Glad I finally have this. Now I have all the guys signed. And some of my uh, 8x10s and autos. I have the photo with Mike Alejandro and Hulk Hogan. I have my one with uh, Lita and Trish Stratus. I have my photo with Bianca Belair and the pre-signed 8x10 that came with it. I don't know why they cropped the photo like this. It's not even centered. They could have just made it vertical, but I'm gonna 
probably print my own version of it. And the Live 19 8x10. And I had this signed by SDL already. So I decided to just get Matt to sign it. This is from the night SDL joined him in GCW in Queens because I was there and Matt was there as the indie god. And of course, the prime bottle that we got after Mania. Uh, it was a madhouse just to get these, and they were only letting one person at a time take them. I actually drank it earlier this week, and it was pretty good. Um, I know people are selling the bottle for a lot, but I want to keep it as a souvenir. Like, I'd, I'd rather not get the money and keep this as a souvenir than pay a ridiculous amount for an event that I didn't even attend. I've kind of just limited a lot of souvenirs to, like, things that have sentimental value, and this is one of them. And so I already drank this, but I put water in here just so I can drink water while I'm talking. I'm going to make it on Fox World! Yeah! <laughs> So, as I've been saying this entire time, my Mania weekend had a wedding in the middle of it, smack dab in the middle. I was in Philly till Friday afternoon, left Philly, went and met up with the family, attended the rehearsal dinner that evening, had an awesome time. And then from there, we had the wedding on Saturday. The wedding itself was beautiful. The reception was a blast. I had an awesome time. So much great music. <laughs> We even had karaoke afterwards. And I'm glad that I was able to make it happen and I was able to make it to the wedding, attend everything, kind of escape the wrestling stuff for a bit, then kind of jump right back in uh, on Sunday and, and go to the stadium for WrestleMania. And the following weekend, I went out to eat with the guys, team package. I actually didn't get much video or pictures. I got this picture of me and Cheyenne, but we were just having so much fun catching up, drinking, eating, had some great foods. I had some shrimp tacos, this big ass plate of nachos. I had some good drinks. So it was great catching up with the guys. And I know it's just tough with all of our schedules, especially with all of them working in the same place. It's tough for all of us to come together and our schedules to align. So I'm glad we were able to meet up and, and hang out for a few hours. Now it's about that time for us to say that it's me, Kevin Smith. And then the month wrapped up with me seeing Kevin Smith and Jason Muse again. I saw them back in September and they were celebrating their 30th anniversary, 30th birthday of Jay and Silent Bob, of the characters. Thank you for coming out uh, for Jay and Silent Bob's uh, 30th uh, birthday. Uh, the, the, you know, we, they act like they're 12, but they are 30, uh, even though we're both in our 50s almost. And I went out to Jay and Silent Bob's Secret Stash comic book shop. Cool little comic shop. So much Kevin Smith movie memorabilia. Rosario Dawson's outfit in Clerks 2. It's the little MacBook used in Zack and Mary. Just a bunch of cool, like, memorabilia they had an awesome backdrop for these professional photos it was like a huge jay and silent bob funko pop 30th birthday balloons and we did three poses i was like you know what i'm gonna wear my boss star production shirt since kevin smith is such a huge inspiration to me as far as like my production influences and i'm just a fan of all of his projects so i needed to get them with the boss star logo i wanted to wear the boss's world hat but they told me to turn it backwards because it may cast a shadow on my face which i know from all the times i film boss's world wearing a hat kevin smith has probably jumped to the top of my list as like the nicest celebrities he hugs everybody as they're walking into the store he hugs you when you're going up to do the photo we've been practicing this for about Two minutes. So, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna lead you uh, along and, and chant. You guys, it's call and response. Okay. So we'll start here. Everybody say J. Jay. J. 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 Wait. This is horrible. Uh, so I'm gonna. The second one is say J. J. J, J, and then you go, J, J. That's when I'm done talking, then you go. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's count of three. So far, so good. One, two, three. Everybody say, J! 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 J!
J, 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 J. We were able to get three items signed. So with the major bendies coming up, I got both my major bendy cases signed in purple. So I can't wait for those to arrive to swap those cases in. And I'll be sure to show them on, on Boss's World and Purchases of the Month. And the 8x10 that I got printed when I met them at that convention last fall. And probably one of my favorite inscriptions, Kevin Smith wrote, I love you, Ron. Jason Muse put the two arrows next to us. Uh, saying sexy so i thought it was just a cool autograph and i'll be displaying all of them once i have the new bosch cave i'll definitely frame that one and, and put the two bendies with it along with it and any other kevin smith movie related memorabilia i will have i actually do have the jane silent bob funko pops those are actually two of the first funko pops i ever purchased a decade ago back when like the popularity started growing for funko pops and i had them displayed in my office on my desk so definitely will display those and it was cool to get a picture with two life-size ones with the actual Jay and Silent Bob. Okay, for this month's throwback of the month, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, I couldn't think of anything to do this month, so... I'm going to go through my hard drive of old home videos and randomly select a clip to show. So here it goes. Here goes Ronnie flinging the gas. Wait, don't do it yet. Ronnie flinging the gas on water. Go ahead, Ronnie. Ready? Come on, do it. Where the fuck it go? I couldn't see it. Wasn't that so funny? So yeah, I'm glad that we're now in the spring. The weather is beautiful. I can shoot out here. It's not windy like it was last month when I attempted to shoot and the wind knocked my mic out. So I had to use the camera mic rather than my lav mic. Luckily it didn't sound too terrible, but it could have sounded a lot better. I'm glad that the weather's beautiful. It's still a little breezy out. That's why I'm wearing my jacket. Glad that my hair is cut as you saw at the beginning of the episode for a vulnerable moment. I'm looking forward to what the rest of the spring and the summer hold. Follow me on X. You already know it's a zero, not a no. At I am the Bosch man. Follow me on Instagram at Bosch Star Prod. Like us on face like us. Like there's more than one of me. Like Bosch Star Productions on Facebook. Pick up the merch at Redbubble.com slash Bosch Star. Subscribe to the channel at Bosch Star Prod. Thank you guys once again for tuning in to the month that's named after the most amazing woman in the world. And I even came out on Raw. You can see me uh, cheering on the Judgment Day from the aisle.